Hey guys, uh, doing a video here on a copper band butterfly that I just added to my 45 gallon tank. Um, at this point, he's been in there just a couple weeks, um, but is definitely doing well, fully eating, um, very healthy, active, get along with all his tank mates. So I wanted to talk you through what I did and how I got him to this point. So first of all, a lot of people um, talk about watching them at the pet store, seeing if they're eating and all that stuff. Where I'm at, uh, you just don't have that opportunity. Very few pet stores carry these. And when they do get them in, they will get one and it's gone the same day it comes in. So um, I had been watching for a while and they just came in, disappeared, came in, disappeared. So I actually asked my uh, LFS to special order this for me. Uh, it came in on a Thursday. I picked it up on Friday. Um, just happened to be when I was in the area. So it was a risk. Take what you get. There was no watching it. It was special ordered in just for me and run with what you get. So knowing that, I had to take a lot of extra precautions to make sure that it was acclimated right in order to make sure it survived and ate because that is the big thing that uh, these guys die from is lack of eating and normally that is due to stress. So definitely minim minimizing stress was going to be a key. So how did I do that? First of all, when I picked him up, I blacked him out 100%. I brought a cooler with me. Um, and actually the cooler that I brought with me wasn't even big enough. I got a cooler from my LFS and put him in there. Um, and we put him in a huge bag. Uh, the bag was about 15 inches wide with about a gallon of water in it. So this is the cooler and the bag that I actually took him home in. Um, and this is important because that bag held again about a gallon of water it gave him room to swim he didn't just sit in the bag stationary or every time he tried to move bump into the bag he had that bag full of water with plenty of room to swim around during his journey home again the goal is reduce stress black him out give him plenty of room to swim around versus just stay, staying stationary or bumping into the sides of the bag. Um, you also saw a fox face a minute ago, and you'll see him again here. I bought a fox face at the same time. That guy there, a uh, bicolor Fiji fox face. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a moment. Um, it just worked out good for me. I wanted a fox face for my tank anyways, and there was one right there in the store. So once I got home, uh, this is day one that I've been playing here. Once I got home, um, I acclimated him in a bucket. Normally I acclimate in the bag, in the tank. That bag was way too big with way too much water. So I emptied him into a dark bucket. I put a black towel over the top of him. I still just did my normal and actually acclimated the Fiji fox face with him. I still did my normal... Two waters out, two waters in to acclimate them, just like I did on my bag video, only this happened in a bucket. Um, and I did that for my acclimation process. Again, he was blacked out the whole time during the acclimation process. I didn't do a drip or anything like that. It was just in a bucket, water in, water out. The other thing that I want to note is I put my tank completely on blues for the day. Um, the reason I did that is I turned it to blues when I got home and started acclimating them because that's when the fish wind down. Um, it's a calmer environment. That's typically when I feed. So I went ahead and fed the fish that were in the tank while I was acclimating him. I let them start winding down for nighttime um, in order to help his acclimation into the tank being much more smooth. Um, so... One of the things I really needed to focus on to make sure it was a smooth acclimation was the aggression of that tang in there. Um, you can see him swinging, swimming around. It's a sailfin tang that I have in there. 
He's been the boss of the tank for quite some time. I always tell everybody when you add a copper band butterfly, it's always a good idea to add it to an established tank and for it to be one of the first fish in. That combo is very difficult to get. Obviously, I didn't have that combo when I added them because I already had an aggressive tang in there. But ideal situation, one of the first fish in and an established aquarium. So what I did is I chose to add the fox face that you're seeing there at the exact same time. I wanted one anyway, um, so I went ahead and put them in at the same time. That split the tang's aggression. The tang, instead of going after the one new fish, which would be this delicate copper band butterfly, there was two fish. And the fox face, although it looks like he's hiding a little bit there, um, he never hides. He's He was, from the second I put him in, out swimming in the water column. They are a much hardier fish, and they are going to come out of hiding quicker, and they're going to acclimate easier. That's going to put him in a position to shoulder the weight of the tang aggression. He probably took 60% of the weight of the tang aggression, whereas the copper band then ended up with the last 40%, greatly reducing that self in tang from going after the copper band and establishing dominance. Put in two larger fish with him at the same time. Um, he had two new fish to contend with, and that was, uh, you can see him getting a little aggressive there, um, but his aggression was split between the fox face and the copper band. The copper band ignored him more, picking at the rock, and uh, you can see even day one picking at the rock. And the fox face was an open swimmer, which drew him more to him, uh, making the fox face shoulder more of that aggression. So that was a key as well. Not a necessity, but definitely will help uh, if you have other fish you want to get and they're there at the same time. When you put them in at the same time and you already have an aggressive fish in there like a tang, it will help split their aggression because they will have multiple other fish that they are defending their territory against while they're acclimating versus one fish for them to just straight out target. And this guy is way too delicate uh, to allow that tang to straight out target him. There's no way he was going to make it. You saw the little bit of aggression there. And um, there you go again. He's again um, showing some aggression. Um, but you can also see the copper band swims around a lot. And without the tang there, the tang stays closer to that fox face because the fox face is more of an open swimmer. Um, so again, aggression's being split between the two of them. So another thing to note is copper bands are jumpers, especially if another tank is being, uh, another fish is being aggressive towards them and poking at them. It's going to increase the chance they jump. So this is normally an open top tank, nothing over the top, just water to the atmosphere. I added this to uh, protect him from jumping out of the tank. Don't want a dead fish on the floor. Uh, this here is the uh, Fiji bicolor fox face that I added along with him. Uh, very pretty fish. Uh, I know he's not the focus of the video, but I uh, thought I'd show him here for a minute so everybody can see the tank mate that was added along with him. Uh, very pretty fish. One thing I will note about him, um, he was actually in the tank with the copper band uh, when I got him. So I already had the advantage of seeing that they were in a tank together and not uh, harming each other. There's a very low chance a fox face and a copper band is gonna do anything towards each other because they're both peaceful fish. But I did have the advantage of seeing that as well, um, which was great. Uh, he had three others of these, and uh, I didn't get picky over the which one has more and less yellow, which one has more and less white. Um, I could have got real picky over that if I wanted to, since there was a variety. I chose the one that was already in the tank with the copper band. Uh, just made sense to me over nitpicking a little bit of color here and there. And uh, here, of course, is the meanie of the tank, this uh, 
cell fin tang this is the guy that was in there um, that i had to split the aggression from so let's talk a little bit about feeding uh, so this was me feeding um, day after he was put in um, you can see he has interest there uh, he chased some of it he never really ate much pecked it a little bit here and there chased it around but that was about it uh, that was miraculous to see so soon i didn't expect that uh, the second day but i got it and that was a uh, Really great to see that he was already chasing food. Uh, the best food that I've found for these guys is the PE Mysis, the high protein stuff, the 69.5% protein stuff. They eat Midas regu Mysis regularly in uh, the home aquarium and having the, the PE Mysis there with the high protein is gonna be the best for him. Again, the first couple days, most of what he did is he picked up the little feather dusters on my rock work, um, didn't do a ton of eating. It took him a couple days. I put him in Friday, and the first time I really saw him eat was Wednesday. So about five days of just kind of chasing stuff, maybe a peck here and there, really just living off, uh, pecking off uh, stuff off the rock. Um, come Wednesday, he started eating about five days in. Um, and about the week, uh, he really took off and started eating fully on his own. And he learned where I feed him at, which part of the tank. And when he's hungry, he will start cruising around that area of the tank to let me know. Um, doesn't mean I feed him when he's hungry, but, uh, you know, he at least knows where to go for food. And so here we're seeing about a week in, and you're going to see him um, actively eating um, I also want to note for the first week that I had him in the tank, I overfed. I fed twice a day. Um, I fed once with the whites on of daylight. And I fed again for my normal feeding time when the blues come on during wind down time is normally when I feed my fish. For this guy, I increased my feeding to twice a day to make sure he got enough food. So again, this active feeding was about one week into the tank, um, and you can see he's actively picking at everything. Um, all the meat, PE mice has fallen down. He's just, he's grabbing it. He's eating just fine. Um, my other copper band in my 56 is very picky. He only eats the whole pieces of mice shrimp. If it's partial pieces, he will not eat it. This guy appears to eat either or. If it's just little pieces, he still grabs it. If it's the whole thing, he still grabs it. So that's uh, actually even better than I could have asked for. I was uh, okay with a, a picky fish that only ate the whole ones. If I get one that eats every last little bit, even the little particles, I will be just fine with that. So guys, remember uh, the feeding is definitely a huge piece be patient. I recommend you overfeed, feed twice a day during a couple different lighting conditions so he can, uh, so he can uh, see and, and kind of learn to eat on his own terms. Um, you don't know what he was doing in the ocean. You don't know what time he was eating. You don't know if it was during the middle of the day, during dusk. So give him a couple options during that first time. Let him eat on his own time and you can move towards what works best for you um, but again uh, also think about what you're feeding the chance of you getting this guy to eat pellets is really low um, you're going to need to feed something like pe mysis that has a high protein in it for the health of the fish um, you're just you're probably not going to switch them over to something like pellets if that's your goal this may not be the fish for you um, if that's your goal and it's going to take you a long time to get there, I would suggest get him eating something else first if the only thing you're going to offer him is pellets. Because um, I do feed pellets to this tank as well. He will chase them. He won't ever bite them, but he will chase them. 
Um, when I put the mysis in, obviously you saw his feeding reaction during that time. So uh, definitely think that through, be prepared. I highly recommend the PE mysis. Um, you can stink it up with a little bit of garlic if you want. I had to do that with the copper band in my other tank. If you saw my previous copper band video, this guy, I did not have to do that. I went straight to just the straight mysis and he ate uh, ate that without an issue. I 100% um, believe that is associated with the low stress ride home in that large bag being blacked out, the blacked out acclimation and the dark blue only tank going in as well as that uh, fox face going in with them to split the aggression. Hope you learned something here. If you have any questions, shoot them in the comments. Um, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and uh, check back later for more content. Thanks, guys.